Hello, and welcome to the Tremplow United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mary Beth. This is Halloween, October 31st, 2021. Let's hear our scripture reading first. We continue with our God's Story, Our Story series, and today we're going to be talking about the Ten Commandments. Let's hear our scripture reading. Good morning. Today's story is from paraphrased from Exodus 19 through 40. The big story of God's love for his people is that he wanted to live among his people, the Israelites. For this to happen, three things had to happen. First, God required that sin be atoned for in the blood of sacrifice. In other words, the people had to make amends for their wrongdoings by sacrificing animals on their altar, a makeshift platform in the wilderness. Second, God needed a place to live. The Lord said to Moses, I want the people of Israel to build me a sacred residence where I can live among them. You must make this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the plans I will show you. And third, the people had to know how to treat God and each other. God instructed the people as follows. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in Egypt. Number one, do not worship any other gods besides me. Number two, do not make idols of any kind, whether in the shape of birds or animals or fish. You must never worship or bow down to them, for I, the Lord, am your God. I am a jealous God who will not share your affection with any other God. Number three, do not misuse the name of the Lord, your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Number four, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days a day is a day of rest. Number four, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days a week are set apart for your daily duties and regular work. But the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. Number five, honor your father and mother. They will give you a long, full life in the land the Lord your God will give you. Number six, do not murder. Number seven, do not commit adultery. Number eight, do not steal. Number nine, do not testify falsely against your neighbor. And lastly, do not cover your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else your neighbor owns. At our first ever Lunch Buddies gathering, and Lunch Buddies being a group of women of a certain age, um, everyone got a card with a question on it. One of the questions was, if you could give up one chore for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, the woman who got the card without missing a beat said, dusting! My question that I received said, if you could add an 11th commandment, what would it be? And I liked it so much, I actually put it on the front of the bulletin that is, is in church this morning. Um, but my answer was, just be nice to each other. I'm wondering what your 11th commandment would be. You think about that. So when I was in junior high, I did babysitting, as a lot of, a lot of us do. And I remember that, that, that moment of panic as I would watch the parents happily skipping out the door, leaving me alone with their children. And usually, the very last words out of mom and dad's mouths, mom and dad's mouths were, be good, kids. And now that I'm older, I, I realize that that is actually a pretty worthless command. How about on the way out the door, mom might have said, um, don't write on any of the walls. Don't plug the toilet with your shirt. Maybe you must not stuff an entire apple in your mouth. And I think it would have been super great if on the way out the door dad might have said don't cut your hair or your sister's hair or the babysitter's hair and no screaming contests. Be good just doesn't cover it any more than my 11th commandment just be nice to each other. God knows a lot, a lot about us. God knows that we need specific details to help us understand what it means to be a follower, a true follower of God. God knows that we are going to forget the rules. And surely, God knows that we are rebellious. 
a little girl was having a very bad day and as five-year-old girls do, she was arguing with her mother. I don't want to do that. Why do I have to do that? I'm not going to do that. Finally, the exasperated mother <clears throat> told her daughter to go sit in the corner, adding, and don't you stand up until I tell you to. Well, the house was filled with a sullen silence for a while as the little girl sat there stewing and scowling and suddenly she, she announced, Mom, I'm sitting down on the outside but I'm standing up on the inside. The good news is that even in the midst of God knowing that we might be standing up on the inside is that God always longs for a stronger relationship with us. And, in, and the book of Exodus that our reading was taken from today is very specific about the next steps that we can take to achieve that. Our very first four commandments focus on um, how to remain in close contact with God. We've got love God, no idols, no misuse of the name or nature of God, and spend at least one day a week with God. And then the last six commandments deal with how we um, can best um, remain in loving contact with each other. So love your parents, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, and don't covet your neighbor's stuff. In the reading that we heard today, three things happened. Well, a lot of things happen, but I want to talk about three things. First, God introduced the practice of sacrificing animals. The idea of this oh, kind of unsavory situation is that the blood from the sacrifice made amends or atoned for immediately the sins of that person that was um, offering that animal for sacrifice. Well, this legacy continued through the death of Jesus Whose, whose blood and body we remember it every time, every time we take communion. Our sins are forgiven by a God who loves us enough to come to earth and dwell with us through the miracle of Christmas. And we are, we are amended and we're renewed by the promise of eternal life demonstrated at Christ's resurrection. Secondly, on Mount Sinai, God asked the people to build a residence so that God could live among them. Now this was, this was a wild concept in ancient times because every self-respecting God knew that you had to make the people come to you in your fancy temple. But this God, this one true God, said, I love you so much that I will come to you. Jesus is the ultimate example of God's desire to be with us. Not only that, but Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John that, that he abides, he lives within us. We are the temple. And of course, the third thing that happened on Mount Sinai that day is that God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments. Jesus embodied them all when he gave us his greatest commandment in Matthew 22. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Now I wonder how many times a preacher has awoken on a Monday morning knowing that the, the next Sunday is Ten Commandments Sunday. Throughout history, it has literally been preached on millions of times. What is there new to say? This week I came to the conclusion that it isn't probably my words that are going to matter. My, my pithy sentences and, and theological gymnastics probably won't help you embody the Ten Commandments. What will help you hold them close to your heart, heart is the absolute certainty that God gave them to you because God wants them to be guidelines of joy for your life, guidelines of joy for your life, free from the burdens of guilt and shame and fear and hiding and standing up on the inside that come with worshiping anything other than our perfect God. We can live in the beauty and goodness that God intends for us. This week's key verse, and we have a key verse every week on, the, on our bulletin, 
is from Exodus 20, chapter 2. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Right here. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And I wonder if you replace the word Egypt, you replace the word Egypt with, <clears throat> I don't know, a word that makes you feel enslaved. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of addiction, worry, sarcasm, family, grudges, betrayal, anger, loneliness, fear. What is your word of enslavement? What is your word of enslavement? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of out of the house of bondage. You know, no matter what shackles you feel right now, no matter what shackles you feel right now, God gave you Jesus as a savior and as a companion. God lives within you in beauty and in goodness, and God will lead you out of the darkest times. Amen. And now may God bless and keep you. May God's love surround you. May you know only peace this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.